Hi, Pet the Podcast Edit here. As a business owner, it can feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. With employee pay, contracts, and deadlines all looming, it's enough to overwhelm even the strongest of business minds. Well, in today's episode, the boys go over the things you might be getting wrong when juggling the intricacies of running a company. It's so important and it's kind of not talked about because there's so much focus on the business for founders and business finances. Your actual personal life and the important things in your personal life does get missed. And Lloyd lets you lucky anchors in on his own personal list of things he does to improve his mental health. I love the list of things that you've just shared that impact your mental health in a positive way. And I want you to share it with our anchors. Okay. Anchors. These are things that have positively affected my mental health in the last two years. Now, before we dive in, we'd like to take a second to thank our sponsors, Adobe Express. Adobe Express allows you to quickly and easily create standout social graphics, logos, flyers, and more on web and mobile. Click the link in the description to try Adobe Express today. Right, let's get stuck in. This is episode 144 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. What do founders miss when growing their business? And what do we mean by miss? What we mean by miss, Dan, is um, there are loads of things online about like tips for founders and it's all like increase your revenue and this is how you get uh funding and this is how you get investment and all the typical stuff but what we're trying to cover here is the stuff that doesn't get talked about that's really important Mm. for founders of businesses and i guess it's stuff from our experience and from um like information outside where we've been like oh yeah that completely makes sense no one talks about that and it's really really important yeah and the first one um Mm. personal finances so this is a bit of a weird one to talk about but uh i guess personally looking at me i've never been good at kind of budgeting and uh, i've never i never really have set my own personal budgets for things Mm. i guess whereas looking at you I would now say that you are one of the best people at budgeting and really understanding your personal finances that I sort of know. Yeah. And I think it'd be interesting to dive into that. Like, why is that? And what's the backstory? Mm. And what can anchors take away from that? Well, uh, so firstly, talking about personal finances, I think it's because it's so important and it's kind of not talked about because there's so much focus on the business for founders and business finances that quite often... (laughs) Uh, your actual personal life and the important things in your personal life does get missed. Um, but avid listeners of, uh, so all the anchors out there will know that Lloyd, uh, don't want to talk about the third person, <laughs> L- little Lloyd uh, was very bad with money um, and had to learn the hard way and um, got in a lot of debt and stuff when I was at university and things and mm. learned those lessons. And that's why I'm, I think, why I'm so good with kind of financial planning and stuff like that now. Cause I kind of, Mm. you know, when you have to go through tough times and you learn things like my tough times of spending too much on vodka and dominoes, as we discussed in the last episode. I was going to say, I feel like this is like a diary of the CEO episode. Um, So that trauma, (laughs) yeah, that trauma being rubbish at finances. Tell me how that impacted you and what what happened? Yes, that really did impact me. And I suppose uh, as a takeaway for, um, how I think founders can learn from what I do. Something I think, I mean, you might think this is really geeky and weird, mm. but I have planned my finances uh, on a massive spreadsheet until I'm 99. Wow. So uh, I'll also go into a bit of detail in a minute and how this can help people. You might think it's weird, but I basically, I've been implementing a lot of processes and things in my personal life that takes stress away from me because I'm I've been trying to look the last few years about how I can have a lovely happy life with my family and not be stressed and one massive stress I think for almost everyone is like finances and making sure that in your life you and your family are financially okay makes sense um so really sad but I've got a massive spreadsheet that covers every year from I think I started it when I was maybe 28 I'm 33 now Mm. And each year it's got what I plan in various categories, 
how much I plan to like save or invest or different things. Uh, what my net, what that will mean my net worth is mm-hmm. um, and how that will change over my life. And obviously that's designed to plan so I can retire, hopefully at a good age where I'm still young enough to enjoy retirement if I want to, or kind of semi retirement if I want to, and to make sure that financially my family is stable and because I want to live a very long life, make sure that myself and my my wife are financially stable until we're like 100 years old. Might not need it. Yeah. Um, Do you want to know what I plan? Go on. So, um, that was a long gap for a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, the different sections. So, one is pension. So, Mm -hmm. I plan what I want to put into a pension every year um, and kind of work out if if your pension got average returns like they do, like they have done in the past, how much will that pension pot will be, be worth? And I've kind of, when we were earlier in the business a few years ago, I was putting hardly anything into a pension because if you're earning less, then there's not as much sort of spare finance to be like, yeah, let's just chuck that in a pension because like, I need to pay my bills. So that yeah, makes no that sense. Makes sense. But so that increases over my kind of career where I hope I'll be earning more. And if I do the right things, I'll have more earning potential as I get older and more experienced and the business grows. Um, property. So I planned in the last few years to buy a property that, uh, that I live in. I'm not, I'm not a landlord or anything um, that I could add value to um, and then sell. And I did that with, with my little bungalow. Yeah, I, I remember. Had. So um, I'll give you some data. Why not? Go on. Bought it for 207000 Sold it uh, three and a half years later for 310000 That's not bad, is it? Um, and that allowed me, with my personal finances, to buy a larger, more valuable property. And the whole reasoning behind that is the earlier in my life I could own a more valuable property, the more that that will increase in value over, over time. So obviously mm-hmm. property in the past, using past data, has always increased in value. So if I can manage to get, uh, obviously I've got a mortgage, but get a property that's worth more, I should have more of those uh, benefits of that property going up value. Did you, so these different categories, mm. is this something that you just came up with and thought logically, oh, I want to plan for that? Or is it there some kind of resource or model that you've based this on? I basically just, all, all the finance stuff I've learned over the years from various books and stuff, everywhere see it seems like the most stress-free way to live is to do the right things and spread risk so i've already spoken about my pension and my property Mm. so right now i've got equity in my property and i know if if our business failed tomorrow it won't (laughs) if i couldn't work for the next five years i could support my family purely by selling my property Mm. for years yeah. So that's one way to spread risk. I'm like, I could not work for years at the moment because I've built up that mm. equity in the property. The other thing is pension. So if if my property is worth nothing, I'm going to have a pension pot when I stop working. Mm. So the other things going into it, crypto. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say the most risky thing in all of this stuff. But I have a column for crypto. Um, I add about 50 quid each month to this pot. And I I've kind of planned on where I think that's going to go. But I honestly think it will probably be worth, uh, by the time I'm in my like 50s, it will either be worth 200,000 or about two quid. <laughs> and I suppose with this part, I'm open to either of those. Yeah. Like it's, it, it's so if high I risk. was putting any spare money so that I had uh, into crypto and nothing else, I'd think, what a dickhead. <laughs> because yeah. so high I'd risk. Be like either I'm going to have 10 million or nothing. Mm. But because, like I'm saying, I'm trying to spread risk. I personally believe it's more likely it will be worth 200000 And then when I'm older, I can use that to support my family and live a nicer life. But risky. Yeah. So 50 quid a month going into that. Interesting. The other one, stock market. I'm putting £150 a month into the stock market. Um, just adding that over, up over time. And I've used on my spreadsheet the typical returns over the long, long period of what that will be worth when i'm older um obviously things go up and down i think currently i'm down on the stock market <laughs> yeah. after all those years because we're we're 
um, had a kind of downturn. But unless the world completely changes and is different to the last like 200 years, mm. that will increase in value. It's a long term thing, right? You're thinking. Um, well yeah. And then I've got the typical savings money. I'm putting in a savings account. Sometimes I can do it. Sometimes I can't because mm. things are more expensive and I have to get go to the dentist. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the final section is our business. So over the years build like and this is actually in my plan where the, the biggest kind of wealth builder in my lifetime for my personal mm. finances that I'm planning. I hope our business is worth more and can earn me more mm. when we're older. Um, and that's another column. Thank you for sharing that, Lloyd. That's okay. That's really interesting. For for anchors listening that um, are listening to that, thinking that sounds really good, hmm. what's the first step? Like, what sh- is 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 it this planning I, process that you've done? Or yeah. what, what's the easiest first step to actually start planning? Nothing is stressful if you have a plan. So I just take that to an extreme. Like, and people might think it's sad, but I've planned my finances for my life. It's not all going to go to plan. But the first thing is. Like you might not want to put money in crypto or the stock market, but at least have a plan where you're like, I'm planning to put this much into my pension and my savings so that I have a plan for when I'm older that I'll be able to support myself and my family. I think where stresses come from money, and by the way, stresses come from money because a lot of things are shit and a lot of people have very tough situations they can't get out of. So I'm not naive to the fact of like the situation I'm in. I'm very fortunate of where we live in the world, mm. very fortunate that our business journey is going well mm. and, and all that kind of thing. So I'm not stupid, guys, by the way. But um, I think any plan, even if your plan, you're not putting hundreds of pounds into the stock market and you're putting 10 pounds a month, if you can see your average returns over the next 40 years are going to mean that you can actually retire mm. and have some money to treat your grandchildren, I think that's far less stressful than not knowing. So I think just starting to get a plan on paper and seeing what you might need to do over time is the the starting point yeah. even if it has two columns which is like savings and pension mm. and there's no other columns and then maybe you add like my sheet didn't have crypto on in when i was 28 and now it does because i added it thinking let's let's have mm. another thing to spread risk <laughs> probably adds more risk <laughs> yeah yeah oh thanks for sharing that lloyd that's okay sorry for talking loads no, no no that was really interesting um so moving on to the second one mental health and this is a bit of a tough one isn't it because again i think it's a difficult topic to talk about yeah but it is something that founders miss or you know when when you're really focused on your business growing your business and trying to optimize it Hmm. you kind of don't think about your own mental health because you're so focused on well that focus on growing a business takes focus away from other really important areas of your life so like family and uh your partner and health health looking after yourself in lots of different ways which can then have an effect on your mental health i mm. think um but what what do you think dan do you do you find it challenging as a founder to kind of look after yourself or or is it something you think you're good at <laughs> i think a bit of both i think there's there's a few key things in my life that i ensure i keep consistent that i know impact my mental health in a positive way Mm. one exercise that's something that i won't um uh stop doing like i'll always figure out a way like even for example more recently i've been taking my son to nursery every morning the time i'd normally be at the gym but i knew that it's still important in addition to taking my son to nursery i still wanted to do exercise so i've been getting up earlier and going to gym the gym earlier or playing squash in the evening so I think that for me, there's that that's one kind of pillar of of mental like positive mental health that I um, focus on and ensure that I keep doing. So you're you know that your ex- exercise keeps your mental health yes. really strong. So you focus on making sure that happens. Basically. Yeah. And how did you how did you kind of realize that exercise has such an effect on your mental health? That's a good question. I guess it's the. Uh, over years of doing exercise, hmm. it's the positive feelings uh, after doing exercise and also like just realizing how much of a better mood I'm in throughout the day hmm. and how much more energy I've got. Hmm. Like, um, yeah, it's, it's completely different if I've gone to the gym or exercised in the morning and I come to work, just the 
how positive I am, mm. the way I think about things um, is just completely different to if I haven't done that. And so it's that positive feedback loop of like, I exercise, yeah. I know that I, my mental health is good. I feel positive. I have energy, all that stuff. So you're like, <laughs> like the Pavlov's dog or whatever, the bell yeah, ring. Yeah, give so me more of that. Happens, you're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn me to the gym. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A another one is, is sleep. Mm. Um, and I think like something that's uh, like an action that I've taken that's been incredibly positive for my mental health as a whole is is investing in a whoop band. That mm. We did an episode um, on this, uh, episode 129, how buying a fitness tracker changed my life. Mm. Definitely worth listening to that. I think this fitness tracker has helped the different elements of my life, helped me track how I'm performing in the different areas of my life that impact my mental health in a positive way. So being able to track that data, again, it's that feedback loop of, oh, I didn't sleep as well that night mm. because of this. And it's shown up uh, as a negative red yeah. number on my tracker. I'm going to change that. And it. I completely agree with that. And I think it's with the Whoop Band, it short, shortens the feedback loop. Mm. So whereas I think it's taken me years to to really link less sleep on like worse mental health and uh, not doing as well in a number of areas of my life, now, like literally in the morning, you see, oh, I've had less sleep. You feel like, you know, I'm being less productive. Mm -hmm. I don't feel as happy, stuff like that. And then it, within 24 hours, you, you're like, well, I want to get good sleep again. Mm -hmm. I think those lessons do take weeks, months and years, whereas it shortens that feedback. loop. I really, yeah. really agree with that about sleep. What about you? I, what, I think, um, so uh, I want to caveat this to say, obviously, people have really complex men mental health issues. And uh, for some people, there's not much that they can do. And mm. it's something that is a real mm. struggle to deal with. Outside of that caveat, mm. I do honestly think, and this is dodgy subject material, but I think people do have a big, most people have a bigger I impact, can have a bigger impact on their mental health than they think they can. Mm. I think over the years, I've seen small things I've changed and and reflected on the massive positive impact it's had on my mental health. And I guess I want to spread that message that I know some people it's much more complex, but I think I've experienced changing things in my life and it having a huge effect. What on are those things? Health. Tell so us. <laughs> I, just, I just wrote, right, this is just a list. <laughs> yeah, okay. But this is how random the different things I've seen mm. over time. Some of this as well, by the way, you know, I'm a massive data nerd is based mm. on like, data from devices i use and my mm. whoop band and stuff but these are all things that i know have had a positive effect on my mental health in recent years Go on. eating less processed food doing something every day that feels like i've achieved something and by the way yesterday it was sanding a door frame <laughs> so like little things that you just yeah. it, it's like a little mental tap on the head like yeah. good job buddy yeah and yeah that i've worked yeah. out now that has a massive effect. It could be raking some yeah. leaves. I jet washed my patio the other day and got that yeah. feeling. <laughs> yeah, It's absolutely mental that like that can have such a, yeah. and it might be if you're not feeling good and that currently you're just scrolling TikTok and just laying in bed and feeling a bit rubbish. Mm. Like just do just something productive. Like, I'm going to wash my car. Mm. You would think, well, how, why would that help my mental health? It's freezing outside. It definitely will if mm. you're doing things like that. Um, sleeping more. We've already spoken about drinking less. I think, don't be in denial. If you don't think drinking alcohol has any effect on your mental health, I think you're lying to yourself. Controversial. We did an episode on that as well. Mm. About sobriety and our yes. breaks and drinking alcohol. And um, buying a Kindle. It's made me read more. <laughs> and it's had, so, it's had a massive so... positive impact over time. Why? And um, Because I, I read more. I enjoy learning. I get a lot out of learning. I waste my time on things that aren't good for me less because I have a thing that's actually good for me to do that I relax doing and I learn things and it's a much more positive uh, behavior than scrolling TikTok mm. or uh, I don't know, eating shit. <laughs> um, planning my life. I just spoke about the whole financial thing. Mm. Like that makes you feel good. Yeah. I, I, I don't have stress in my life because I've planned things and that's taking stress away. Planning my finances. Obviously. Yep. Mm. Playing Lego with my son. Um, just looked at my notes. I spelled sun with a U. Um, 
<laughs> I don't, I don't uh, play Lego with a massive burning fireball. <laughs> I play it with my six-year-old son. He's great. Oh, okay. Thanks for clearing um, that up. But this, and this is something I don't think is so stupid. I've had periods of time in Leo's life where I've been like, he's been sitting playing and I've been on my phone doing stupid stuff that doesn't matter, mm. not paying attention to him. And just putting my phone down and playing mm. Lego with him instead of doing that mm. is just, I think, for both of us, yeah. so much better. And I reflect on it. I'm like, why the fuck was I yeah. doing that? It's so yeah. stupid. But anyway. On that, just on that point. Mm. So fun fact, the other night uh, I was playing with Lego with Leo yeah. and um, he asked me to find these tiny little gem pieces, all of them in this huge box of Lego yeah. and pour them out on the floor. And I found them all with him. And you know that whole thing of doing something like you felt like you've achieved yeah. something? Yeah. I did all that. And then I got that feeling of, there you go, mate. I've, yeah. I've done, got all those little bits. Honestly, <laughs> Lego, so Lego as well. You, so get, you get that little mental pat on the head. <laughs> build, building something like, oh, I built that. Yeah. Like this shitty little car. But <laughs> this is what I mean. Small things that yeah. you people would laugh at, but I genuinely feel they have a massive yeah. positive impact. Um, playing chess instead of being on TikTok. Again, mm. just very specific to my life, but something small that... I feel like I'm really using my brain. It feels like I'm learning a skill and I'm not just mindlessly scrolling. Yeah. Um, standing in my garden without looking at my phone. Right. <laughs> Have you... I love how specific these are. But, right, <laughs> just stand outside in nature mm. and just don't be on your phone or anything. Just look around for a bit. <laughs> Absolutely mental. Makes you feel great. <laughs> yeah. um, I think that is a good one, being in nature. Yeah. I can definitely relate to that. Um, hugging. <laughs> again mental i've realized you know they, there's some it definitely releases there's some scientific stuff mm. around it it releases but honestly i hug like friends or family and i can feel the little buzz <laughs> it's, that's mental um but like i feel something happening yeah. in me that's so, like yeah. a positive thing and i think i am i'm a more touchy feely person mm. i think i am like that but it's just weird that yeah. that physical contact with someone. Yeah. Oh, this sounds sad now. <laughs> oh, I need physical contact. <laughs> but, no, it makes sense. Um, giving to charity, exercising. I think I've written that three mm. times now. Um, and finally, playing c c competitive sports or games. Yes. I get a massive buzz and like positivity out of playing squash with you. Mm. I've recently been trying to just play new sports that I'm not even good at. Mm. Like I played... Pickleball. What's it called? Pickleball, yeah. In a random sports centre. And it's just fun. Like that little mm. competitive nature mm. of it and getting active. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel like that's a really good list, Lloyd. I, I think as well, but for a, like practical takeaways for anchors, listen to that list. Note down those categories that Lloyd's just said and just think of a thing that you can action in each of those categories to try and see how that makes you feel. Yeah. I think that could really have a positive impact. The reason I wrote down such a random list is like I think nearly all of them are tiny things. Mm but I've just noticed them have such a massive effect over like the last two years, I'd mm. say like the ch playing chess instead of scrolling TikTok mm. thing. Like that has just, that makes me feel so much better mentally. Mm. Um, and it's just weird. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, caveat, I know people have very complex mental mm. health needs. You, you can't necessarily just think I'll play chess yeah. and I'll be fine. No, no, you get that. But that's genuinely my experience. Mm. And I, would really encourage others to try some of those things. Do you know, I think that list really ties into the next one we're going to talk mm. about, which is work-life balance. Mm. I feel like all of the, I think all of the things you've just shared mm. um, will help you have a better work-life balance because they're all things that you do outside of work yeah. that you'll get enjoyment from. Because I do think this is a big one for, for founders. I especially feel this. I struggle to, to not think about the business and because it's such a big part of our lives yeah i feel like i am constant and, and, and like i'm not saying that's always a negative thing or a positive thing i think it's both mm. i think i get excited about growing this business and working on growing yeah. the business and working with you and working with the team and creating content and all these things mm. which means i think about it a lot but also on the negative side i think about negative things that happen and yeah. critical things you know all constantly analyzing how can we do better how can we do better mm. so uh, i guess i think you're very good at having a good work-life balance i guess you've given all those examples which share how mm. but is there any other nuggets you've got for listeners of how you know if you're constantly thinking about your business how can you improve your work-life balance well i would say it's been a journey for me like i used to think about work outside of work a lot more mm. and i used to get stressed a lot more mm. 
and I do think now I've I've got good at getting this balance. I think two major things that have really helped me, I suppose talking about work life balance, but allow me to step away from the business and not be thinking about it all the time. One is the just accepting the fact that you can only do the best you can do. Mm. And as long as I am putting the effort in during work hours, I accept that I can't solve everything. Yeah. I can't be perfect and I can't make sure everything's perfect all the mm. time. Weirdly, like that seems simple, but once you kind of have the point where if you think you're stressing about something and you think, well, am I, I going to do, do. do everything that I can do to make this mm. better? Yes, I am. So what's the point of stressing yeah. about if it doesn't go well or it does go well? Mm. I know I'm going to do everything I can, mm. um, but currently I'm, you know, swimming. So yeah. I need to stop thinking about that. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, uh, this is a kind of mental health thing as well in life. I heard about this thing called catastrophizing mm -hmm. and uh, really related to it. I think it's called that. I might have just made up the word, <laughs> uh, made up what it is. But I used to go down these rabbit holes thinking about work when I wasn't at work of. So it might start like this. Oh, we sent those videos to that client. I hope they like them. What if they don't like them? then so i'm thinking the worst thing that can happen mm. they don't like them and then i think if they don't like them they might not want to work with us so they think the worst mm. thing that can happen they don't want to work with us and if they don't want to work with us maybe they'll just ask for a refund for everything we've done all mm. the work we've done with them previously worst thing will happen is literally never happened in yeah. the history of the business It'd be so weird if that <laughs> would have happened and then i think if they offer a refund we're going to be in financial trouble if mm. we're in financial trouble we have to sack everyone if we have to sack everyone then I don't have a job, really. If yeah. I don't have a job, then I don't have any money. If I don't have any money, I'm homeless. And that so, sounds rubbish. <laughs> like so a rubbish you think thinking. of the worst possible mm. thing mm. and you go down this route and obviously the chances of all those things happening are like mm. much less than being struck by lightning or winning the lottery. Yeah. Um, but your your mind goes, so so now if I ever think like that, I just stop and think, no, that doesn't make any sense. I was going to ask you, yeah. how do you stop doing so that? So if I start thinking, uh. what if they don't like the videos? Then I think, oh, I'm doing Shut that up, thing. Lloyd. And I go, <laughs> they might not, but also 95% of people do. Yeah. So yeah. probably will. Yeah, stop um, being an idiot. And then you just stop that yeah. process. But anyway, work-life balance, like a lot of it is those kind of things mm. to stop you th feeling the need to think mm. about work all the time, I think, in my my opinion that's really good we also just said for anchors we did an episode episode 63 that's called how the f do you balance work and home life where we go into that in way more detail so if mm. you want to learn more there then listen to that episode can i make one last point no yeah you can if you're a founder like right, the business is yours yeah if you're if you are saying no to going to your kids nativity and if you're saying no to uh ever being able to go for a walk in your lunch break you are making those choices mm. don't uh don't say that that has to be the case because it mm. doesn't you're making those choices and i have found that just saying to yourself i want to go to my son's nativity so i'm going to and putting that as a priority in your life and in your calendar yeah. um is going to make you much happier in the long term. It's so obvious. Like one of the benefits of having your own business should be that you have flexibility. Yeah. Whereas you're, you're not allowing that. If you've got your own business and you're miserable and can't do anything you want to do, um, I don't think you should have that business. Yeah. Or, or you should come up with ways to, so that's what, that's what I mean. Like yeah. Change it. Yeah. Like uh, this is a wake up call for anyone. That's like, I've never been to my kid's parents evening or like, I never, Oh God, I don't even get to stop for lunch. Like you're making those choices. Mm you can stop and it might mean you have to earn slightly unless, less for yeah. six months while you work out how to yeah. do things or it might or be unless forever yeah like it, yeah. i was listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about this the balance of like earning more versus happiness where's that tipping point yeah you know you could earn 30 percent less mm. but be way happier and have more time or you could earn 30 percent more and be way yeah. unhappier and yeah 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 cool um number four lloyd relationships yeah mm. this is um this yeah. is a big one i guess as a founder you uh you have to make sacrifices mm. uh in your life to be able to grow a successful business mm. like and that is a fact you can't just 
be doing everything in your life completely brilliantly mm. and have the biggest business in the world, the best relationships in the world. And that, yeah. I guess relationships is something that is sacrificed over building a successful business. How do you think you're doing with relationships? I think... It sounds, it sounds like a proper therapy session. No, I think... Um, uh, mixed. <laughs> mm. So, so for example, I think with my, with my friends, mm. I think I've become a lot worse at being proactive in speaking to them and proactively wanting to meet up and that kind of thing. Um, and also, I guess since having a family, I think mm. that's the case as well. We've got our friends WhatsApp group where we talk, mm. but I, I, I think I used to like just randomly call people most days like, Hey, mm. you're right. Whereas now I don't, I do sometimes, mm. but I think I've got worse at that. But then I don't know if that's just a general thing that as you grow up and you get older and you have a family, yeah. you can't just constantly yeah. do that. That's, yeah. Yeah. I think it's so tough, isn't it? Like in life in general, even not as a founder, balancing, you only have so much attention mm. and so much time. But I do think relationships are the source of the most mm. happiness that you'll probably ever, ever feel. I, and I don't mean romantic relationships, mm. by the way. Obviously, that's one type mm. of relationship. But I think friends colleagues um are you good family. at it um i i think with my friends i think i'm good i i have to admit i've been thinking about this a lot recently i've i've been feeling um most of this episode i've been sounding like i i know everything and i'm really good <laughs> at everything i've been feeling a bit sad recently i think um i uh there's there's one of my close friends and i've been making effort so on the other side of things i've been mm. making effort for years now and he just doesn't make any effort back and i've kind of had to accept over the last few months that i need to stop because it's like it's it feels rubbish mm. when you don't get it the other way um and you know i'm always making phone like calling him and mm. i'm always trying to arrange things and it's now been years of him never right reciprocating. get a hint mate and um yeah exactly i'm like <laughs> Right, I've got to take that hint now. And mm. like, obviously this relationship isn't as important to him as it is to me. Mm. So I need to kind of move on. Mm. And I think also getting older, um, I, so like some friends I do have less in common with. And I think it's uh, like, and, and over time having less and less in common with, I think that's quite hard as you get older where you've had good friends and then gradually some of them you drift might apart. have less in common with and drift apart. But I suppose what I'm trying to think about is um knowing how important relationships are making mm. sure like i nurture the, the good ones and the ones that can get stronger and people i really like spending time with and that seem to like spending time with yeah. me like i i get a lot um out of like people that i spend time with here at work like people i didn't know three or four years ago i really enjoy spending time with them here mm. obviously our relationships are really strong mm. um I'm really lucky to have a romantic relationship with my wife and obviously so new relation, having children, new relationship with uh, children mm. and like my nephews, your sons and stuff. There's obviously new relationships that are getting stronger in my mm. life as others maybe get weaker, which is a hard thing to deal mm. with. But I do think I'm a bit rubbish with family as in maybe not family, like close family, but extended family. I think I'm quite bad at, and that's something I'm neglecting, mm. which I'll probably regret. Mm. Sounds rubbish, doesn't it? Do something about it then, mate. Yeah, right. <laughs> but finance is planned till I'm 99. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm perfect, really. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I suppose <laughs> we've kind of talked through the challenges of it, mm. but I think we both know that with relationships, you have to put time and effort in mm. if you want them to stay strong. Yeah. So I think we both need to do that more. Yeah, no, good point. Should we do that? Yeah. Okay. Should we finish with one more? Yeah. Okay. Should what, we? What do you want to finish with, Dan? I don't mind. Let, uh, let's go with let's go with um, the final one, which we've touched on, but I think is incredibly important. Like mm. I mentioned, is health and wellness. Mm. Um, I like I said, I think it's one of the core pillars for me personally through my experiences. Uh, diet and um, uh, exercise. Uh, I guess they're the two key things that mm. i've really focused on that have had the biggest one of the biggest positive impacts on my mental health so you've stopped putting those big things up your bum that are giving you medical issues haven't you yes yeah i stopped doing that yeah. uh <laughs> it puts a lot of pressure unnecessary pressure on the nhs as well when you keep turning <laughs> yeah. up. another fanta bottle <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you are such a felon 
Yeah, so uh, focusing on your health is important, <laughs> not putting things at your bum. Yes, I, so I'm sorry. I, I took that off the rails a bit there, didn't I? But I, I completely agree. I know we touched on stuff. Um, I've recently had issues. I had a health report back that said I had high blood pressure and high cholesterol. That's rubbish when you're in the 30s, but um, really changed my diet and it's so stupid and it seems so simple, but I changed my diet to be much healthier and I feel so good. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, Lloyd, you <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah. Like, oh, what a surprise when you don't eat processed shit yeah. and you eat lots of fruits and vegetables and mm. things and feed your body what it needs yeah. to live. Rather than Domino's and vodka. Good. like Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't had those for a while. <laughs> but... um. I know firsthand from like the last month where I've had a drastic change in my diet. I've been good at exercise mm. for quite a long time, but diet and immediately I feel so much better, so much more energy and so much more energy to go into the business as well as my what, relationships. And stuff. I've noticed that you've really improved that. Mm. What for anchors listening, what was the turning point? Cause I think you've been trying to work on your health and fitness and stuff for years. Mm. I think recently it's been the best it's ever been from an outsider's perspective mm. and how motivated you are to focus on it. What, what made that happen and tell the anchors so that they can learn from that? Um, I, well, I noticed we've spoken about weight bands a lot. Yeah. On my weight band, I had an extremely low heart rate variability, which is something that they focus on as a indicator for health. And I went to my doctors a lot. I was quite concerned about this. I was looking at it and it's like the average for someone in their 60s or something. And I was thinking, well, that's definitely not mm. good. And went to doctors or the doctors kept saying, you are so healthy. And I was like, no, definitely not. There's something not right here. And so I went for proper blood tests and stuff. And as I said, I got that like physical report saying you have high blood pressure, you have high mm. cholesterol on paper, basically things that will shorten my life if I don't change and seeing that written down was enough of a shock to like it, it again so stupid that these aren't linked it suddenly linked what I'm eating and drinking with the health of my body mm. <laughs> that's so simple obviously <laughs> but on, on paper saying that like things yeah. that would shorten your life um then really mm. woke that up of like oh that has a direct effect I can see the data now I'm going to change it because I want to live a long, healthy life. Um, so track, I guess, doing something to like that health check or even yeah. the, the whoop band. But even getting a whoop the band. The data if showed you, you. If you see that you're like, you can see other people your age, you can join groups of like people in their 30s or mm. there's even a small business owner group. See where you rank. Like that. You can see where you rank and see if you see that you're in the bottom 20%. I think that's a bit of a wake up call to mm. be like, what my fitness is in the bottom 20% mm. of people the same age as me. That shows yeah. like on paper, not on paper because you're not a boomer, but on screen <laughs> it says you're not as healthy as you should be. Yeah. And it's having effects on your like yeah. body. Yeah. So that's what changed it for me. And I feel so stupid. You obviously made that link in your brain at a much younger age <laughs> and uh, have much healthier habits before I have woken up to it. But that's really interesting. Yeah. Anyway. Well, thanks for sharing that, Lloyd. I think you've shared lots of interesting things this episode. Yeah, sorry, I've probably spoken. No, too I much. think it's nice, no, really interesting. Um, anchors listening, if you have enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you click subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening to, we will pop up when a new episode is live every Thursday, yeah. uh, so you don't have to go searching for it. So, click subscribe now. What you go to your kids' nativity, <laughs> buy a whoop band, <laughs> sleep more. <laughs> Do those four things and your life will be bloody brilliant. And we'll see, see you in your ears, ears next, next week. week.